Hello and welcome to Let's Explore. My name is Steve and today we're in and around the village of Shenton in Leicestershire looking at a canal, a railway and, of all things, a battlefield. Let's go and have a nose there. It's 1925 again. Right then, so for today's video, I popped over to Western Leicestershire to explore the outskirts of the village of Shenton. As you can see from above there, courtesy of Google Earth, of course, the yellow dot always marks the spot, don't it? But it's a great little village. You've got the canal, the railway, and also the battlefield to go and have a, a butcher's at as well. And here is an Ordnance Survey map dated 1886, courtesy of the National Library of Scotland of Shenton. Now, I didn't actually explore the village fully today. We actually, the actual exploration will be to the right of this map that's not in picture at the minute. But this is just showing that you know the village hasn't actually changed at all that much in 134 years. And it's really nice to see, you know, we live in a world now where we're developing everywhere. You know, where I live currently is no different. You know, we're developing there. It's, it looks completely different to what it did 50 years ago where I live, to be fair. And what you're looking at there is, is our main area of interest today. And of course, courtesy of the National Library of Scotland, once again, we're looking at a map of 1886, an Ordnance Survey map. And uh, the actual village itself is to the left of the picture, just out of it, a couple of hundred yards down the road to the left. And you can see the Ashby Canal there, clearly highlighted in blue. And to the right of the canal is also the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway. And the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway was the last piece of real development in the village itself and that was between 1869 and 1873 so while most of us have been overdeveloped Shenton has survived since 1873 but it really is great to see to be honest and I wish where I lived was a bit more like that that's for sure. Okay so it's the 1790s and you live in the small village of Shenton in rural Leicestershire. Maybe you work on a farm and maybe the farm has provided you with a small cottage where you've got a vegetable patch, a few pigs and a few chickens. So life's pretty relaxed, you feel pretty chilled out apart from the odd bit of manual labour down on the farm. But in the back of your mind you're filled with absolute dread and you feel really uneasy because you know what's on the horizon and what's about to hit the small village of Shenton in Leicestershire is going to change it for the foreseeable future. But what am I talking about? I'll show you. And of course, this is what I'm banging on about and getting excited about because this is the Ashby de la Zouche Canal. Let's go and have a look at it. Right then, so the Ashby Canal. So I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're thinking to yourself, Steve, it's full of water. It's not been abandoned and it's not derelict. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see it with water in it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, there is water in it. I'm quite pleased there is water in it, actually. I, I do love it down here. I spend a lot of time down in this area walking on it and, and running as well sometimes. But for me, this part of the Ashby Canal at Shenton is really fascinating because you don't realise it just yet, but we're actually stood on a very steep embankment that this canal is built into. And we're around about 60 feet high, believe it or not. And maybe a touch over that actually as well. But just up there, you can't quite see that. There's actually something that I think is very exciting and a great feature and my personal favourite feature on the whole canal itself. So let's go and have a look at that. Because what we've got here is the Shenton Aqueduct. And it's a fantastic piece of civil engineering, this is, it really is. And of course, underneath this aqueduct, is the road into Shenton village itself and as you can see here you know we're really high up and you know like I said earlier this embankment that this sits on it's it's huge it's massive and as you can see really large retaining walls here either side I'll tell you what we'll go down there and we'll have a look at it closer up shall we and here it is as promised the Shenton aqueduct but much closer up let's go and have a nose there come on and you know what, they talk about craftsmanship and skill, don't they? But just look at this on this aqueduct. You know, you've got your standard brick layout here. I don't know if you can see that. And then here, because of how the arch is designed, because it kind of leans back like that, 
you've got to adjust your brickwork to suit. And whenever it's straight here, all of a sudden, you start adjusting it. So, really good that. So work started on the Ashby Canal in the 1790s and work was completed in 1804 and as I mentioned earlier a sleepy little village such as Shenton you know which is still in 2020 a really rural place um, you know the only difference now that there's tarmac on the road and there's cars on the road I mean the place is still pretty much the same as it was you know the best part of 230 years ago but you know when you imagine that it was a sleepy you know village you know really slow pace of life you know, there was not really any trouble here. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue, hundreds of navvies or navigators turned up to start digging out this canal, or in this case, in this area at Shenton, building this huge embankment. It's incredible, isn't it? But it's, what's really fascinating here as well, we've got the canal here, and what you've got over there, I don't know if you can just about make that out, that is the embankment of the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway, because there's actually a, a station at Shenton as well, but uh, a bit more on that in a bit. So, you know, they had to put up with this being built up till, you know, 1804. And then the best part of, what is it, 65 years later, they started building the Ashby and Nuneaton Railway. So they had all the navvies down here again <laughs> in uh, between 1869 and 1873. Bless them. Right, so I was looking on the old maps earlier and just outside Shenton, you know, where you've got this beautiful large embankment here for the canal i noticed that the river sense goes underneath it so i instantly thought and i knew gotta be a big brick culvert there gotta be and hey presto here we are and i'm actually standing on the head wall of it let's go and have a closer look i love these culverts right then so his first piece of indiana jones in it and as far as indiana jones in it goes this is very mild and if it stays like this for the rest of the morning which i think it will on this one today then i'll be a happy chapper but as promised here is your beautiful old culvert that takes the river scents beneath that beautiful and large magnificent ashby canal embankment up there and what they would have done here this predates the canal not by much what they'd have done that I had to have built this first to sort the water problem out down here. And the river sense, whilst they were building that beautiful head wall and tunnel, culvert, they'd have had to have diverted the river sense either side. So it either went to the right, you know, a short way away or to the left. I don't really know while they were building that. Then once they'd finished the tunnel and the head walls, they'd have let the water then enter the culvert and then they would have started building the canal on top. But yeah, again, another piece of fantastic civil engineering. This would date between 1795 and 1804. I'm not actually sure on the date when construction of the Ashby Canal started, but it was in the 1790s anyway, and it definitely finished in 1804. But yeah, lovely. So after I recorded the previous clip there at the culvert, I quickly realised that they wouldn't have diverted the river in the first place, I wouldn't imagine. They'd probably have left it there, built the culvert next to it, and then when that was finished, they would have then diverted the water into the culvert in its finished state. So I hope that clears things up a bit. Right then, so what's very interesting about the Ashby Canal, just before we move on to the, uh, the actual Ashby and Nuneaton Railway side of the video today, this canal was actually taken over by the Midland Railway in 1846 up until around about 1890 when it slowly started to decline from a business point of view anyway. And what's very interesting down here, although that is a canal up there, you've got a railway marker here and as you can probably just about make out, MR, Midland Railway. And of course, where you've got anything that's owned by a railway, whether it be a line or in this case a canal, I think you usually find these little markers around about every quarter of a mile. So that's very interesting, isn't it? But yeah, it was taken over in 1846 by the Midland Railway until around about 1890. Brilliant. 
So the poor villagers of Chantenay, at some point in the late 1700s, between then and 1804, they had to endure the navvies, you know, rioters, drunkards and poachers as well. And then when the canal was finished, they thought, yippee yay 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 they're gone, it's done. And then, 60 odd years later, this arrived, the Ashby and Nuneaton Railway. And what an impressive bridge that is, let's go and have a look at it. So now you join me down at Shenton Station and as you can see I'm actually stood on the platform and uh, just over there in the distance you've got the station as well. Got another interesting little building here and I'm not actually certain that may have been the original station. I'm not entirely 100% certain on that but I know that the main station over there was a, a later addition I think but uh, yeah, very interesting down here and of course the battlefield line which was once of course called the Ashbyton and Eaton Railway actually terminates here. It's a preserved piece of railway that goes from here and runs in that direction to the village of Shackerston about four or five miles away. But uh, we'll go and have a look. There's a few people about so I'll take a few photos and I'll, I'll show you a bit of it. Let's go and have a look. where the battlefield line terminates just up there you can see a buffer just on the line up there above it you've got this beautiful bridge here that's actually a footbridge now I've walked underneath here time and time again but until now I've never actually been to either end of it to see if you can still walk over it now this would have been built between 1869 and 1873 so it's an original structure and it's very old so we'll go and have a look if we can see across it that'd be quite a good wouldn't it come on let's go and have a look yeah, so unfortunately I can't get any access to this bridge, uh, as you can see here. It's been blocked off. No access to the bridge, they put a gate in front of it and everything, but in places I don't think it's safe and sound. I've just been to the other side of the, uh, the railway track um, to see if I could get in on the other side of it, but uh, it's on private land that side, and I didn't want to be going about gallivanting on uh, people's land this morning, especially when there's a house there, pretty much looking at the, uh, the bridge itself. But that's a shame, but it is nice just to see it here still, though, isn't it, you know? Right then, so in that direction, we've got Shenton Station. Of course, I'm now stood on the former Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway Trail here, but it actually ends at this point. But what we've got here is a very interesting bridge. And down here, of course, we've got the Ashby Canal, of course, with water in it still. It's still used to this day by many happy boaters and fishermen. And of course, you get a better view of it here. And uh, hopefully I won't fall in the canal. But as you can see here, that lovely bridge there spanning the canal. And if we go up to the top and have a look, as you can see a very interesting bridge, isn't it? You know? So I assume here you've got a track this side and a track this side as well. But uh, beyond there, there's a bit of a picnic table. Now, you can't go the other side of there. That really is proper, full-on Indiana Jones territory. You could get over there to walk a bit of the line, but it is private property, so I'm staying away from there because we have got a bit more to look at today. Right, so now, I'm just walking through Ambien Wood at the side of the Ashby and Nuneaton Railway there, and I've actually took the alternative route because there's a lot of people about this morning, and I can't blame them, to be honest with you. It's an absolutely stunning Sunday morning, but when you're trying to film as well, <laughs> it can be quite awkward and difficult, you know. But it is nice to see people out. But what I'm doing now, as the sun pierces through the trees, very magical. I'm actually going now to have a look at Bosworth Battlefield because it's a great area to explore this. Is You've got the railway, the canal, and of course the Battle of Bosworth, so let's go and have a look for it anyway. That's if I can find the main path out of here. Right then, so what you're looking at here is King Dick's Well, or King Richard's Well. Now this cairn was erected in 1813 by a local reverend. And what you've got down here, within the cairn, is a bit of a spring. Because between here and the Bosworth Battlefield Visitor Centre, there used to be a medieval village called Ambien. Of course, Ambien Wood is just over there. I've just walked through it. But apparently, King Richard III, whilst in full battle, 
had a drink from this spring. And you know, it's thirsty work, all this battling, isn't it? You know, but uh, I don't know how much truth is in that, but uh, very interesting all the same. And you know what these local legends are like. I certainly don't know from looking on his uh, Facebook post because that didn't exist then. So, but yeah, very interesting all the same. Right then, so I actually did a bit of filming today at the top of Ambien Hill at the Bosworth Battlefield, but I was thwarted by the wind and the sun was so bright. Not that I was complaining because it was a beautiful day, it really was, as you can see from the blue sky on that photo there. But what you're looking at, I'm at the, kind of at the top of Ambien Hill and around the bottom of the hill, what you're looking at there is pretty much apparently where the Battle of Bosworth actually took place. Now, a lot of people say that it didn't actually happen right there others think it happened um, more towards the village of Fenny Drayton a few miles away nobody I don't think fully knows but if you're going to have a few thousand men having a fight they're going to scatter stuff all over the hockey aren't they so we know it was in this vicinity I suppose don't we look at this for good timing I was just making my way back down from Bosworth Battlefield and the Santa special train has arrived look at that beautiful and a shy driver because he knows I'm filming him. Right then, so before I end today's video, I've brought you down here to look at this lovely grassy field. And you're thinking to yourself, why you brought us down here then, Steve? Well, I've brought you down here because this field is known as White Moors. And apparently this is where King Richard III stayed on the night before the Battle of Bosworth. Now, how they know that, I don't know. Maybe they found some old tent pegs or something and a receipt from uh, Go Outdoors where they brought the tents and supplies from. I really don't know. But very interesting all the same. Well, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you at the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.